Hey everyone, this video is about the TI-74 basic calc that was on the market from 1985 until around 1992 and it was the evolution of a series of Texas instrument devices. Uh, in 1979 TI had released the TI-99 for the world's first 16-bit home computer and the 1994 uh, sold well over 2 million units and part of the reason was it was very inexpensive. In fact, TI had been forced to sell it at a loss for $100 in order to compete with Commodore's VIC-20. And in 1983, TI had released the Compact Computer 40 or CC40. And this had a very, uh, form factor similar to a laptop or notebook. Uh, but it had a very similar basic interpreter to the 99 and was it was sold at a higher price point of $250. And so the 74 continued this trend of miniaturization and its price in 1985 was only $120, which was great value for the time. The HP 71B, for example, uh, was sold at around $500. And the 74 was the only basic language pocket computer that TI ever released uh, in the style of the TRS-80 pocket computer. And the 74 also had a sister device, um, the TI-95 ProCalc, which I have a separate video on. Uh, the 95 was more expensive at $200 and it was an advanced keystroke programmable calculator aimed more at professional users. For an inexpensive device, the 74 is impressive physically. Although it's all plastic, it's really solidly built. Uh, the device has a cartridge port which supports a bunch of different ROMs. Uh, there was an excellent math module and also a statistics module. Uh, there's also uh, chemistry, finance, and even a Pascal language ROM. And uh, this is just the port protector, uh, which is uh, to protect the port from dust. Uh, the device also has a hex box uh, peripheral port on its top uh, and hex bus was uh, TI's equivalent of HPIL uh, and you could use this to connect the 74 to devices like a tape drive printer and modem. Uh, the device has a uh, 31 character display where each character is 5 by 7 pixels and there's also a contrast wheel on its right side uh, where you can adjust the contrast of the display. Uh, the keyboard has slightly concave uh, rectangular keys and uh, they feel okay to press. Interestingly the keys on the QWERTY keyboard are all set uh, from each other slightly. Uh, and this takes a little bit of getting used to. I find it's not easy to type quickly on the 74. Uh, internally the 74 has a Texas Instruments TMS 70C46 CPU which interestingly is not the same one as the 95 Pro Calc. It has 36k of ROM and 8k of RAM. Uh, and if we turn the device over uh, we can see on the back that it's powered by uh, four AAA batteries. And um, interestingly, there are a bunch of patents listed. Uh, one of them is a push button on off system. Uh, another one is a method for automatically turning off the display without a timer chip uh, using a, a counter register that overflows. And another is around TI's algebraic operating system uh, that can evaluate order of operations. And the 74 comes in a rigid plastic case with a reference card and uh, the top cover flips over uh, and clips shut uh, to form an elegant box for storing the device. And so like the HP 71B, the 74 has two main modes, there's a calculator mode and a programming mode. Uh, and we can switch between them using the mode key. And uh, so in calc mode, the QWERTY keys uh, take the functions specified by the blue labels. And on the display, we can see three elements. So uh, there's a number. Uh, by the way, this um, display has a column of dead pixels. Um, there's a separator character and then a trace area. Uh, so let's type uh, 2 plus 3 times 4 
and then equals. And you can see that as I type the operators, they appeared in the trace area, which is nice. And functions that take a single argument like sign, uh, you just type afterwards. Uh, and there's also an inverse operator, so we can hit inverse uh, sign. And uh, there's a hyperbolic shift key as well. And for functions that take two arguments, uh, you need to use the x comma y button. Uh, so for example, uh, permutations, let's say we wanted to uh, find the uh, three permutations of uh, 10 uh, objects. Well, we'd um, enter 10 uh, and then the x, y key, uh, and then we'd hit 3 uh, and the permutations key. And so the answer is 720. And of course you can store and recall um, numbers from registers. So uh, we can hit store uh, 1 and um, recall that using recall 1. And the 74 has a fairly advanced version of BASIC for a pocket computer, and here's an example that illustrates some of the more unique features. And this program finds the root of an equation using the bisection method, which is basically where the, a program keeps picking a midpoint between two values of x, and then determining which side of that midpoint the root lies. And you might notice immediately from scanning the example that the 74 didn't support uh, labels, only line numbers, uh, but it does support long variable names up to 15 characters. So for example, uh, the program uses a variable epsilon for the minimum error margin. And long variable names makes programs a lot easier to read than um, on some other pocket computers that only supported single or double, double character names. And so the program starts by uh, declaring three arrays. And with 74 basic and the dim statement, uh, you actually specify the maximum index that the array supports. So each of these are single dimensional arrays that hold only one item. Uh, and they're used in an interesting way because after prompting uh, for the low and high guesses, uh, the program calls a uh, subroutine to calculate the value of the equation at those two endpoints. Uh, and although subroutines on the 74 can't return values, they can modify items that are passed in as arrays. So uh, the result of evaluating uh, the function at A and B uh, will be stored in the FA and the FB arrays. Uh, and then there's a, a loop that uh, with a terminating condition. Uh, and the midpoint is calculated halfway between A and B. Uh, and then the range is narrowed down to one uh, side of the midpoint. Uh, so in this example, we're finding uh, the root of 5x squared uh, minus 9. Uh, and so here's the graph of that function, and say if we start with um, endpoint 0 and 2, uh, then the algorithm will find the midpoint, which is 1, and determine that the root is on uh, the top side of the midpoint. So on the 74, let's uh, switch to basic mode, and we can see the lines of code by uh, hitting the down arrow. Uh, and we'll run the function now. Uh, so let's enter our low guess as x equals 0, and the high guess as x equals 2. Uh, and so one of the roots is at around 1.336. Uh, of course, we could find the other root um, if we start at minus 2 and go to 0. And the 74 has only a single program space, so if you want to store multiple programs, uh, you need to distinguish them by line number, and the run command uh, takes an optional line number to start at. And the 74 has an interesting feature where you can assign text to hotkeys. So say we wanted to store run 100 in a hotkey, um, then we can hit shift in function, and then a digit 1. Uh, and now if we hit function 1, uh, it will recall that text. 
And so in summary, the TI-74 Basic Hilt was an interesting device aimed at the low to mid end of the pocket computer market. Uh, hardware wise, it's very solid and well designed. Uh, it's very in a basic, it's fairly powerful, but the device only supports a single programming space and no real file system. And it also didn't have true user-defined functions, uh, recursive subroutines or text labels. And although the 74 was on the market for many years, uh, TI never produced a direct successor. And although it's not quite as unique as the ProCalc, it's still quite a fun device to play with. It's fairly good value to pick up on eBay, especially if you can find some of the ROMs, uh, which are apparently quite powerful. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, please don't sub forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.